Ah, uh, yes. Welcome, Skillcap viewers. Today, I'm in the Amazon rainforest on an expedition to try and find some of the rarest Valorant metas in human existence. Wait! Shh! Do you hear that? Oh my moogly googly, it's a wild harbor! These things are almost extinct! Watch as it's hunted by all the other wild agents for throwing their elo. <gasps> We've been spotted! We gotta get out of here! Well, that was fun. To be honest, there's a lot of undiscovered metas out there that a lot of you guys aren't taking advantage of. Some of them are a lot better than you think, and you could even abuse them in your rank games. So let's talk about them. But before you do, just know that we're going to be talking about a lot of uncommon agents on a lot of different maps. So if you want to play any of these at a high level, we at Skillcap can help you out. We have Radiant One Tricks of every agent who know the ins and outs of their agents on every map. Combine these with the world-class courses that we produce, there's no shot that you don't rank up. It's literally our job to help you improve at this game. So come try us out at Skillcapped. We'll be waiting. Now for our first off meta comp, we're going to be talking about Phoenix on Breeze. Don't get me wrong, Jet is really nice, but Phoenix has the potential to be even better. I mean, just think about it. What do you think is the strongest part about Phoenix's kit? It's his run it back. His ultimate is insane. The orb over towards A is extremely easy to grab as well, making your sight hits extremely powerful and a force to be reckoned with. But not only is his ultimate crazy good on this map, so is the rest of his kit. It all just fits really well. Let's see your team wants to A split or their B split through tunnel. His wall fits perfectly for either of those. Also, who's the most common controller on Breeze? You're right. It's Viper, and his flashes are great at going through Viper's walls, his own wall, alleviating pressure for his team, or just making aggressive plays on defense. His hot hands is a flexible stall ability, so that now you have mollies on both A site and B site. And if you have a KO, your A site should be as hard to hit as your Viper's B site, as now both sides have double mollies plus a KO knife for either site. Still not convinced? Well, Team Liquid saw the potential of Phoenix on Breeze, and they decided to bust him out twice at champs. They didn't drop either map, and they beat both Optic Gaming and Edward Gaming. Let's take a look at a round from those games. Flash. Another fade down now and that is going to be the go button for Scream. Wants to push forwards right in between pyramids, making waves on the map. He will eventually be dealt with though and it's a great timing on top of it. So Team Liquid is on an eco round and they're getting ready to slam A site. Scream has his ultimate, pops it, and literally knifes out to back site knowing how much space his ultimate is giving him. He gets the opening kill and even makes enough space so that his chamber, who's up in halls, can open the door and shoot Selva in the back. The amount of space that this ultimate creates is insane. So if you want to pick up Phoenix on Breeze, it isn't troll. I actually think it has a ton of potential. Next, we need to talk about Killjoy on Pearl. With Chamber's new changes, he honestly isn't that great on this map. His rendezvous just doesn't allow him to play in those crazy spots we used to see him in, like on top screen. He's just a lot easier to clear out now, and I just don't think he's that great. With his recent nerfs, this has paved the way for what I believe is going to be a Killjoy meta. But with Killjoy in the mix, this allows Jet to slide back in as well. And as a matter of fact, we've actually seen pro teams make the switch before Chamber was even nerfed. Skilled Jet players are able to still play in these spots that Chamber used to play in. As long as she's smart with her dash, she can play in these spots pretty effectively. So finally, we're going to see Chamber and Jet players have to play with a brain. But that's beside the point, Killjoy is busted on this map. Breach isn't as meta, and with the recent changes, his Aftershock doesn't even break her ultimate. Ultimate. So this means that Killjoy's ult gets insane value literally almost everywhere on this map. Want to retake on A? There's like five different spots you can use it from. B? Sure. This thing is nuts. And on attack, she can do the same thing. She's just way more flexible than Chamber on attack. Her nano swarms are great at clogging up B link, clearing out angles in art, and her turret can literally hold whatever her team wants. Let's watch around. Sugetsu up close. Does have that rifle. And a lockdown going to be dropped. This makes it difficult for Parla, especially with Loris going down towards main. Go the players of Parla, hiding behind that wall, hiding behind that corner. One-way smoke comes out, stopping people able to peek. Cned, just wait and see those legs. There's a headshot, there's a second. So this round is pretty simple. Kiltry is retaking A, she walks in a flower, she places her lockdown down, and it wins her team the round. But before this clip, you can even see that Jet is forced to take an unfavorable fight before the ultimate is even placed. It just demands that much respect. So I'm telling you guys, with Chamber out of the meta, Killjoy is back in business. And now next on our list is something that pro teams haven't run, but it is something that I've seen in tier 2 play that I think can be really meta if perfected. And this would be Breach on Ascent. Ascent is all about map control, defaulting, then grouping up and slamming a site. And Breach's kit is perfect at doing so. His fault line clogs up all of B main or A main from literally across 
the map. He can flash for his teammates into anywhere, and his aftershock fits perfectly into all of these hard to clear angles that people love to clear. A popular play to do on defense with Breach is he'll send a flash towards tiles, and his jet or rays will follow it up by dashing or satcheling down mid. Breach can be slotted anywhere on this map, and no matter what you need him to do, he can do it well. Let me show you. So you know how Omen's paranoia is great at taking the main, and teams will actually use it for a rush? Well, Breach can basically do the same thing, but with his stun, and he gets more as the round goes on. It's so good. So here, that's how he starts off the round, and they take B main control pretty easy. After clearing out mid with a breach flash, they head over towards catwalk to start an A split. Now, do you remember what I said about how it's hard to clear places like hell? With breach, these spots are a lot harder to play. And against other agents, Cypher probably gets at least one here. The pressure that breach is creating couldn't allow Cypher to shoot the guy who was tagged by his tripwire towards the door. Again, breach can be meta on this map. And with a duo who wants to play with you, you could farm some free wins. All right, now let's see how fast you guys can hit the dislike button. Three, two, one. Harbor is good on Fracture. Oh, whoa, 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 wait, wait. Before you hit dislike, let me explain what I'm talking about. When playing defense on Fracture, your job is to push out and try and seize some form of map control so that your team generally has a good idea as to where the hit is going to be. And Harbor is great at getting aggressive. As a matter of fact, Paper X has recently run him on Fracture and other maps too. We've also seen him in some big name charity games as well, featuring players like Scream. While he's been somewhat successful, I think that over time, he could be pretty good on this map. His Cascades are great at pushing literally anywhere on the map. His High Tide can block off all three choke points like Brim Sky Smokes, and his Cove can allow your teammates to get a safe plant off or get them out of a sticky situation. And his Ultimate, his Reckoning, complements his playstyle well and being able to retake sites a bit easier. It offers good info, makes the enemies feel awkward, and allows you to retake efficiently. Watch. So Paper X is gearing up to hit A, but Harbor does mess up his wall here. By pushing yourself as close as possible to A main, you can actually wall off Dish pretty well, but he makes up for it later, don't worry. He uses his Cascade to close off Dish, but because his teammate couldn't get out of Sand, they're in an awkward situation. Because of this, Harbor uses his Reckoning to try and take some pressure off his teammates, and hopefully they can follow up off it themselves. But after losing some aim duels, they unfortunately lose Sands. Now if you look at the minimap, Harbor decided to take things into his own hands, and punish the Breach and Chamber for trying to retake through his ultimate. If you noticed, they both got stunned, and Harbor was able to clutch the round for his team. And now last on our list, we have a personal favorite of mine, and that's KO on Bind. And in case you guys didn't know, I'm a KO main through and through, and believe that KO should be run on every map. He's just too flexible to not have on your team. He can stall, he can gather info, he can set up his teammates, make plays for himself, arguably the best ultimate in the game. I mean, the list goes on and on. On this map, KO has knife lineups for Lamps, Shower, Long, Hookah, Long and Hookah. He can get info anywhere and help his team take map control if that's what they want. He, like Raze, could also throw his knife through either teleporter to get information. And if you want to get super nerdy, you could use this molly lineup that lands on top of the site as your team is executing to flush out anyone out of tube. Watch this round and see how versatile this agent is. Well, here we go. Fast pace move already. Kesner looking to try and leave the charge. He's actually got quite a bit further than maybe they will have expected. The rest of the team still trapped back. He needs to try and find some sort of open here. And in fact, so many ults being committed from FBX, they don't want to give them a chance oh. back in. Saigetsu just spams as they try and make a move, but he's managed to take down a couple. Xiao with one more. This is looking like another slaughter. Unbelievable. Well, mm -hmm. that's unbelievable that he went for that. Mm -hmm. When they... They used the ult, stopping the wall from going up, which stopped Kesnet from getting support. Then they put their own orb up, allowing Kesnet to run back. And as he attempted to, Sagetsu sprayed two down through the smoke. One enemy absurd. Remaining. Absolutely absurd. This round goes to FPX. And I, the amount of rounds that have come from the likes of Angels. So on this round, Crew is on an eco round. And they want to use this Viper Wall to get in the lamps and basically just run it up short. But like I said, KO can do it all. He's pretty good at snuffing out lurks like these with his utility. And then he finally realizes that the enemy team is trying to run it down and then he pops his ultimate. Do you notice how the entire offense is forced to just sit there and freeze? No other ultimate in the game does this as well, while also being useful in other aspects of the game. KO, in my opinion, is meta on this map and every other map in the game. And with the recent chamber nerf, I think KO is the best agent in the game. But I could just be biased who knows so hopefully i've helped you guys dust off those gears in your brain and realize that these maps don't have to be played only one way every map in this game can be played with arguably any agent so stay away from those echo chambers of people who try and tell you that only certain agents are good on certain maps go out there get creative and play whoever you want
Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel down below. It really does help us out. But before you go, keep in mind that this is all just one of many in-depth guides that we have on our website. Also, if you want a chance at having your VOD reviewed, be sure to subscribe on our website at skillcap.com. We also have tons of Radiant Smurf commentaries where we have Radiant players walking through exactly how to have the most impact possible in a bunch of different situations. So what are you waiting for? You got nothing to lose. Head on over to skillcap.com and get started on your way to that rank that you deserve. And yeah, that's it, guys. Thanks for listening. I'm Teets, and we here at Skillcap want to thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.